What is going on you stallions and stallionettes, AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. Today we are going to be doing a review of the Motorola Moto E. This is a $120 smartphone available on Amazon. It is GSM Unlocked, so you can pop in a SIM card and it'll work for T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, pretty much any unlocked phone company out there. So without further ado guys, let's unbox this bad boy, see if it's any good for that $120. See if it's any good for that $120 price point. Alrighty guys, over here at the unboxing station and we are going to unbox the Moto E here. So one of the features this bad boy boasts is a 13 megapixel camera, which isn't very impressive, but then again, $120 price point, you really don't expect it to uh, act like a flagship phone or anything like that. So you have your actual mobile device right here. You have a SIM popper tool that will also allow you to install uh, external SSD if you were SSD. I've been working on PCs too much. An external SD card for expandable memory. You have your instruction manual here, uh, which is very, very basic. No pictures, no color, uh, real cheap paper and whatnot. Not the finest parchment I've ever seen, boys. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, you got a little quick start guide and a little bit of a moto care protection in case you want to protect your $120 phone. You have the brick. You have your cord here, which I'm assuming would be, I'm gonna say micro USB. There's no way it's like USB-C. Yep, micro USB. Review it and have uh, probably a couple of weeks to play with it and give you guys my impressions. So the device itself actually looks really good. A little dust on there and whatnot from the factory, but the device itself actually looks really, really good for a $120 phone. So it looks like a glass back. That doesn't look like a plastic back. That looks like a glass back, like a Gorilla Glass back. But that's insane in a $120 price point. So we'll just say PVC plastic. You have the little Motorola logo there in the back. You have dual cameras and flash module there. So dual cameras on a $120 phone. My goodness gracious. I remember... $120 back in the day, I'll show my age just a little bit on you guys. Uh, you could get yourself a flip phone. Uh, you could get yourself one of those QWERTY keyboard ones that slid on its side and then you flip up and it had a keyboard hidden underneath it. Uh, then, then the uh, Motorola Razr came out, the, the Razr flip phone, not the Razr foldable smartphone that's out now. Anyway, uh, you have a front facing camera here, just the tiniest little notch. You have your speaker right there. You have uh, a single down-firing mono speaker right there. You have your charging port right there. You have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. You like to see that, Apple. You like to see that. It's great when a $1,000 flagship doesn't have a headphone jack, but a $120 burner does. Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's uh, power this bad boy on. Super bright, vibrant screen. I have two soft boxes running right now to give you guys that sweet, 4K YouTube experience that you guys crave in the nether regions, and I like to make sure you guys leave my channel satisfied. But yeah, very bright, even with all the, the lights scorching my corneas. All right, hi there. All right, so we're gonna go through the startup phase here. Connect to a mobile network, sure, sure we can. Insert the SIM card into the tray, then insert the tray. Shows you how to insert the, uh, how to penetrate your phone with that little smart key and then put your SIM card in there and a optional SSD card if you do want to expand your memory. As this does have 32 gigabytes of internal memory, which isn't great. I mean, it's not terrible either. It could have like 16, so could always be worse, but I definitely would put an SD card in there if you're going to be stashing a lot of games and apps and music and stuff like that. Alrighty, Boyd's got our SIM card here, got our iPhone XR, this is my daily driver. This is actually getting traded in, in the near future. And of course, I will be going back to Android. I've had uh, two iPhones, and before that, about five Androids, and then before that, my first iPhone was a 4S, which is still, in my opinion, one of the best iPhones ever. Alright, so, let's get the old, uh, where, where do I stick this thing? There it is. Couldn't find the hole. <laughs> I hate when that happens. No SIM card installed. No shit. Metal connectors facing away from the screen. So, pop out my T-Mobile SIM card. So you can only technically put it in one way. Uh, you have to put down the metal side away from the screen, but also there's a little notch cut out in the top left that kind of directs you to do that anyway. So even if you didn't read the instructions or look at the fucking screen to know what to do, uh, you can only do this one way, boys. All right, searching for Wi-Fi networks. 
All right, damn, that's good internet, that's mine. You guys need not worry about my passcode. Okay, cool, so even just typing on it, it feels extremely responsive and also you get a nice haptic vibration out of it too. So this doesn't feel like a $120 phone so far. It doesn't look like a $120 phone, like that little notch on there and everything, like that looks like a good mid-range four or $500 phone. Checking for updates, that might take a few minutes to get it up and running. It's showing uh, about, there's no percentage, but it looks like about 70% battery life. So the first thing we are gonna do is plug this bad boy into the wall and get it a full charge. That's something you should do with a new phone is let it get a full 100% charge, you know, so that way you set up that battery memory and whatnot so it remembers a full charge. Some people say that's an old wives tale, but those wives are wise and it makes sense to get your battery charged all the way up and then drain your battery all the way down to zero, then refill it all the way up to 100. Do that at least the first couple times you charge your phone. That will set a good uh, memory for your, 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 uh, your battery. Copy apps and data. You can choose to transfer your apps, photos, contacts, Google, and more, yes. All right, sign into your Google account. So I'm gonna sign to my Gmail slash Google account. So the swipe works better than my iPhone XR. I hate the Apple swipe. They were about six years late to the party on swipe for text, and it's not as good as what Android's had for the six year period. So yeah, just saying. Apple swipe, not it's not responsive and it doesn't work that great. I mean, it works, I can use it. Open the Gmail app on your iPhone XR. No SIM card installed, no shit. But I should still be on Wi-Fi. So it says, open the Gmail app on the iPhone. Okay, cool, it's asking me, hey bro, you sure you wanna do that? Yeah, I'm sure, man. An Android 10 device is trying to connect. Sign in approved, it said on this screen, this one starting to do stuff, get off of me. So it's offering you automatic updates through your email. I'm just gonna skip on that for now. Uh, I'm gonna agree to Google's terms of service, getting account info. So it's digging up all my Google account stuff. So all my like passwords for my Google password chain and all that should be on there automatically. Uh, backup Google Drive, sure, yep. Location services. Um, I generally turn those off, but I'm just gonna leave them on for this phone. Device maintenance, send usage and di diagnostic data, I turn that off as well, I'm gonna do that on here. There's no reason for me to send my personal information to third party companies to be utilized. All right, unlock with your fingerprint. We're gonna set that up. So this has a fingerprint reader as well. Pretty cool for a $120 phone. So far, I'm very impressed. Note, your fingertip may be less secure than a strong pattern or a pin. Well, it shouldn't be. Proper biometrics, such as like an iris scanner or a fingerprint scanner should be pretty gosh darns fool, foolproof and fail safe unless somebody chops off your finger or gouges an eye out. Find the sensor located on the back of your phone. Okay. All right, so you gotta keep hitting it, moving your finger ever so slightly each time. So the sensor seems to work pretty damn good. I'm having no issues hitting it. You can add another set of fingerprints. So if you wanna add another finger because you grab your phone with a different hand or you have somebody else that you wanna be able to unlock your phone. Guys, be careful with that one. I can really bite you in the rump. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and hit done with that. Just a sec, your assistant will be right with you. So while that's doing that, just putting this next to the iPhone XR, it's bigger than a XR, it's taller. The screen size is larger. It looks like the bezels are even smaller. A 6.2 inch max vision, which looks very good so far. So, I mean, it's it's making my 10R look pretty outdated. <laughs> $120 can get you this nowadays. All right, so it's asking me if I want to do anything else before I close out the setup process. Do I want to add another email account, change the font size, change my wallpaper, add another fingerprint? Uh, we'll change the wallpaper from here, actually. So you've got live wallpapers, which are the dynamic moving ones. We'll go ahead and pick one of those right now. It's a good looking screen, man. It really is. All right, we'll set that for both home and lock screen. Uh, now it's asking for permission for Motorola to send me promotional emails and stuff. We're gonna turn that off immediately. There's no no need for that. Grant location permissions. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off as well. Cause that's, that wasn't from apps that you have on your phone, like GPS and stuff. That was from Motorola wanting to know your location. There's no need for it. A new way to navigate. Learn how to use Android's new gesture navigation. Swipe up from the bottom to go home. Okay, so just like the iPhone. All right, same thing. You do like a half pull up, pull out, and it'll pull up your recent apps. And then you swipe like that to go back. Swipe towards the middle from the left or right edge. Okay, so left or right edge to the middle. We'll go back. New system software update is available. So damn, I mean, this looks really good. Like, I'm not gonna lie, the screen looks amazing. 
Uh, it's bright, it's vivid, it's crisp. The phone is extremely responsive. This doesn't feel like what I would picture a $120 phone. Granted, we're gonna test out the camera, get into some gaming and run some benchmarks as far as multimedia is concerned, watching movies and stuff like that. But like all in all, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. But all in all, like this is so far initial impressions, very, very impressive. So a bit of a downside with this phone, you do only have two gigs of RAM, which is pretty darn low. However, you do have the Snapdragon 632 in there, which is a pretty gosh darn quick processor. Uh, screen looks really good. It's extremely responsive. I do like this clean user interface. You can move around the default widget, which is this Google search bar here. You can also add additional widgets. I am assuming that's your battery life. Yeah, 65. It shows you the day of the week, the date. Uh, you can also adjust some settings here. Um, you do have your fingerprint scanner on the back. You do all those dual cameras, which is a three megapixel camera, a three, Jesus Christ, a 13 megapixel camera, which has different modes, portrait, cutout, spot color, panorama mode, live filter, slow-mo, video mode, and time-lapse. And it feels pretty responsive and everything. Obviously, you're not gonna have like gimbal-like stabilization or anything in a $120 phone, but there's your video mode. We are gonna be uh, messing around with this phone over the next couple weeks, shooting some videos, maybe a couple of vlogs, maybe even shooting a couple of YouTube unboxing and reviews from this device here. Uh, this is just my initial impressions, unboxing and whatnot. Again, like I said, I like the interface. If you wanna move around any of these default applications, you slide them over to over other pages. And I'm used to the iPhone because I've been on it for uh, a while now. And that's only four by, I'm not sure how high, but this is actually five wide for applications and then seven high. You can tap the top for a quick little peek at your uh, settings or you can pull down. So I've been using this phone for about two days now. I'm not gonna have my comprehensive review for another two or three weeks after I've used this as my daily driver for that entire time period. By then I'll have a really good understanding of the, you know, the camera quality, being able to vlog with it. I'm gonna be doing some gaming benchmarks, stuff like that. And that'll all be in the next video, the actual review. But I have gotta say, uh, just using this for two days, this does not feel like a $150 phone, I will say. Uh, due to this all plastic body, I thought it was Gorilla Glass or something on the back because it looks incredibly reflective, but this is just an all plastic and it's very, very light, which I like. Some people, you know, might think it feels cheap and chintzy. Um, I like that it's light, personally. Uh, camera quality is good. I've taken a couple portrait mode photos, some panoramas, as well as some uh, videos at a maximum of 1080p. That's what this caps out at. And there's some features that I really like on here that I wish uh, my iPhone had here. Um, you know, they're pretty much synonymous with Androids in general, for example, the karate chop to turn on the flashlight. This thing is sweet. I mean, the user interface is buttery smooth, resolution looks good on the screen. Even though it's only 720p, I guess because it's only a, you know, 6.3 inch display, 720 looks good as opposed to like a 720p TV or monitor, which would look like poop. That Snapdragon processor is lightning fast. I haven't had any issues yet, but again, I haven't done any gaming benchmarks yet. I'm watching YouTube videos, web surfing with multiple tabs open. Um, running a bunch of apps in the background, trying to really give it the old stress test. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss my comprehensive review when that comes out in about two weeks or so. And I am really excited about this phone, honestly. It does not feel like a $150 phone at all. So that is going to do it for today's video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.